Okay, I should make the title of this video Grrr, because that's what goes through my head every time I see something like this. It really has nothing to do with the radio, how it was designed, other than how people work on it, which is what the video is about. But, uh, and this, I'm just using this radio as a prime example because it has already been destroyed. It is a Stryker SR955HP. Of course, that's a uh, you know, 10 meter amateur. <clears throat> They say it's a 10 meter amateur mobile transceiver. Um, I think everybody knows this is not a, wasn't designed to be a 10 meter amateur ham transceiver. It's not a real ham radio. It's just a, what I call black box export radio. So, you know, these things are designed to, you know, basically like all the others that have been made for decades, snip in a clip and you've got yourself a, you know, high power CB. That's all they are. It's just a CB masquerading as a ham radio so that's not what this video is about and this video is not so much about how this radio is made um it's how you work on them and how people and it's what this is and i don't usually do i'm not a bitchy type person <laughs> but this stuff like this you're, you're killing me guys um i don't and i don't know who's doing it radio i know some of it's some radio techs but you know it's a lot of uh, owners doing this type of work but uh, you're killing me, you're, you, and you're killing other people. Um, this radio now belongs to me, and I say now belongs to me because this was a customer's radio along with another one. He got two radios, this and a Magnum Omega Force, and both of them have been what I would call their basket cases now. As you can see from looking at it, this is not your normal older through-hole style component design circuit board you know it has some through hole components you know it's got crystals some electrolytic capacitors transformers some of the pots you know there's there are through hole components here and you can see there's some circuit traces on the back side you know for some of the parts that pass through but very very little the majority of this is surface mount you know you've got processors and very small parts and I hate to tell you this, especially guys that, you know, this this type of design, you know, might, you know, for people that this scares, I hate to tell you this, but shit gets smaller than this. <laughs> it gets considerably smaller. Um, you know, they started out back in the day with the, what, 1206 size. They switched to, you know, the 0805s, the 60603s. You're getting into the 0402s in this, but they, the parts get even smaller than this. I mean, you get down to the 0201s, and now I don't... You know, in uh, like cell phones and stuff, really small electronics. I'm not sure if they've gotten, because I don't run into it in the type of communications equipment I work on and electronics, but they might even be down lower or smaller in size than 0201 now. But uh, you're not even going to find 0201 in this. So this, like I say, this isn't as small as it gets. And if you can't deal with parts that small, it was little teeny tiny parts in there, about the size of two grain, two or three grains of sand, basically. If you can't deal with that, you need to find another job. You know, go dig ditches, milk cows, become an accountant. I don't care what you do, but uh, this ain't the world for you anymore. If you don't like surface mount, uh, you need to find another job because this is, I hate to tell you this, this is the way everything's going. You know, surface mount technology was used mainly in higher end stuff back in the day. Um, and it was more expensive. And as technology's progressed, the surface mount stuff is now considerably cheaper than you know, the through-hole components. So, even CB manufacturers, which is all this is, just an illegal CB, um, but, uh, you know, they're going to surface mount now, too, and you can see all the parts in there, all those teeny, tiny little, you know, you look at that cluster of transistors in here. Each one of these is a transistor, and these are big. You know, these, these parts, are, you know, to me, they're big. You know, I'm used to working on this type of stuff, but, uh, like I say, a lot of people, this scares them, and what has happened to this one was, and I've got all the RF shields off over here for all of these, all the RF shield shielding cans, but someone had worked on this, and they've destroyed it. Yeah, the guy bought this, it, he knew it didn't work, this and the Magnum Omega Force he got didn't work, and he had, you know, got them cheap and had hoped they would be easy fixes, and I, as soon as I got the cover off of this one, I just did this, same thing I normally do, oh god, not another one. And I've got dozens of radios like this that people have sent me that have been destroyed by somebody else. For starters, I can see it had a massive burnout 
all the charred smoke down in there and I've already had this off and it looks like somebody had already replaced the the final transistor down in there at some point but they didn't clean any of that off there are little blasted off pieces of solder stuck to other parts in here there's pieces of wire some of the main problems was like in this area here and I'm with without using a which I don't have yet I've got a microscope but I don't have a microscope camera so I don't know how close I can get in on this but to show but the circuit traces are just destroyed here I mean someone has you can just look at this transistor and see how crooked that is. The traces are, they, they, I don't know what they were trying to fix over here, but they tried to do something and they ended up, I guess they slipped with their soldering iron, which is easy when you're working on stuff like this. If you're not careful, and the big thing is using the wrong equipment, um, they end up damaging all these traces and they're trying to, you know, the proper thing to do is to cut the trace out and, you know, replace the damage trace they're just trying to jumper stuff with solder and this this is not right i mean it's sloppy and it's like that everywhere in this radio there's globs of solder over and where right here there's a bunch of globs some of the parts down in here i don't even know if i can get focused down inside this can but there's uh get a little light down in there maybe you can see some of these capacitors how crooked they are see that or not none of these parts are installed properly you know, just extremely poor uh, I don't know what you'd want to call it solder desoldering and soldering technique they, they, they had no technique <laughs> and, and it's like that throughout there's blobs in all of these cans I don't know what you know what all was supposed to be wrong with this thing but man they just mangled the board in several places like that and it's not like I've had some videos where I've showed doing circuit uh, trace repair on some of the older radios, which isn't, it's t even that's tedious work, but it's not that hard. You know, the traces may be an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch wide. That's huge for me, you know, trace wise compared to, you know, if you look down in here, you can look at the density of how close together all the, the dark area there is no trace so the light area here that is the circuit trace and you can see the little light areas come through the pass-throughs that go between the layers of the board but you can see how many traces there are here you know that run to chips and ICs and other you know header sockets and throughout the radio but you, know, you get in here and start damaging a lot of these it ain't like back in the day where that was fairly easy to fix a circuit trace these can be fixed if you damage them, but it's extremely time-consuming and tedious work because they're so small. So, you know, if you're going to, you know, if you don't like surface mount, find another job. Because, like I say, that's the way all radios are going. You, you're just going to be out of luck here in you know, a few more years to come. That's the way all radios are going. Um, if you do want to work on it, and you're currently working on shit and, and producing results like this you need to uh, upgrade your uh, practices on how you solder and desolder. And I know what people are doing. They're trying to use the same equipment um, they've been using for years on the old through-hole components. You can't use it on stuff like this. And here's a good example. This soldering iron right here. Well, not so much the soldering iron, but the tip that's on here. I use this soldering iron tip, and they're replaceable. This is a Heiko, you know, Extremely popular soldering iron. Also have pace pace iron, but you know the tip just comes off very easy. You said just do it with one hand. Okay, these are replaceable, so you only need to buy one iron, and then you can buy separate tips for it. But this tip is fine if you're on the other side of this board. If you're unsoldering, you know this can these can you know aluminum electrolytic capacitors, or you're doing some of these potentiometers, or you know. This transistor back in a corner, and I use this tip for probably well all of my normal soldering. But when it comes to surface mount, it's too big. It's time to change. You you need smaller tips. Um, something like this when you slip, that's what happens. People get in here, they're trying to hold. Well, good lord, you look at the soldering iron. It's you know two, three, four times bigger than the part you're trying to solder. You need to use tips that are appropriately sized for the component you're soldering. And something else you need to do is, is invest in a good set of tweezers, okay? The only time these tweezers come out 
is when I'm doing surface mount work. Your old clunky, you know, standbys, you know, stuff this big, or, you know, big big ones like this. And I've just got some anti-slip stuff on the end of these, but they're too big. You try to get down in here, and I mean, these are fairly small, and these are fine for through hole. But when you get down here, you can see the size of this tip in comparison to the component. It's too big. It, it, it's the tip is, is almost wider than the component is long. So you need to get yourself some good tweezers with very small tips. Okay, and they're more appropriately sized. You can see down in here when you're working on this type of stuff. See that? It's the perfect size for grabbing these components in place and when you're, you know, removing or placing them in place and, you know, holding them down when you're soldering them. So, you know, buy yourself a good set of tweezers. And when you do, don't ever use these for anything else. They'll last a lifetime if you use these just for working on surface mount stuff. Don't be using these for pulling screws out of stuff, twisting and turning. The only time this set comes out is when I'm doing surface mount. Other than that, this lives lives a sheltered life in this nice little case. The other thing, flux. I can't overstate that enough. Flux, 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 flux. Anytime you're doing surface mount soldering, unlike your normal through hole components, you really don't need any flux other than the flux that's already in your solder. When you're doing surface mount stuff, you need to, you know, you can use liquids, gel styles, you know, I buy big tubs, put it into, you know, the syringes here. This is a gel style. And then this, actually, I buy, I import this from, I think, Denmark. Denmark or Germany, but, uh, colophonium. But, uh, you know, it's a germ. This is made in Germany. But, uh, this is just a rosin cake. You can see, but it's hard. See that? That whole tin, which is, what, I think 20 grams, is it? Yeah, 20, 20 grams. You know, I buy these little cakes. I, I get several of them at a time. But uh, I break up that entire cake, and that goes into one of these bottles. One 20-gram cake gets put in here and dissolved. And so that's what's in here is 20 grams of that rosin cake mixed with IPA, or I, you know, 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol dissolves it. And then I, you know, I'll filter it through to make sure there's no impurities in there. But uh, in between every step when you're working on these things, you need to be using lots and lots of flux and, and, and then clean in between every stage. And I'm not going to go into detail on how to do it. There are several videos uh, extremely well done and edited here on YouTube already on how to do surface mount desoldering and soldering. Um, there's lots of good techs that have done some really great videos on demonstrations. Um, and there's even some old videos from, God, I don't know, they might be 19 mid 1980s or even back into the late 70s that were done by pace um, and i have a bunch of pace desoldering and soldering equipment they've been making equipment for decades and it's extremely high end you know it's pricey but you get what you pay for um but they have a bunch i think their youtube channel is like pace world i think but uh, their videos like i say they're probably from back in the 70s or 80s and they're still relevant today for working on on uh surface mount components but they go into good good detail on how to properly do this type of work. Um, and like I said, there's lots of other YouTubers have done really, really great videos, but this is not how to do it. You're just destroying, I don't care if it was the owner, but, you know, destroyed his own radio or if somebody took this radio to another radio tech and they destroyed it, but, you know, stop it. Yeah, this is this is ridiculous. There's there's just no no call for sloppiness and destructive for you're taking it especially if it was a tech that did it you know somebody's taking their radio to you for repair they're not taking their radio to you to have it destroyed if they wanted it destroyed they could do that themselves so uh do some searching on youtube it, it, it doesn't cost that much to get into you don't really have to have uh, hot air reflow equipment i use hot air i've got some you know expensive hot air stuff you know like i've got my uh Made in Japan, Hosan, you know, hot air gun. It comes with all different types of nozzles. And, uh, as a matter of fact, I can reach over here. Grab, my God, these nozzles run like a hundred and, uh, I don't know, a hundred and fifty bucks a piece, I think, somewhere around there. 
but you know for doing some of the really big stuff you know but you don't have to have really extremely high-end equipment like this you know you can make do with a decent soldering iron big key there is appropriately sized tip you can't be using these the, the soldering iron that you've used for the last 30 40 years working on you know through hole or even tube type equipment and expect it to work with this microscopically sized components you know by and like i say you don't have to have fancy you know extremely fancy hot air reflow equipment either you can make do with the the component sizes that are in here if you get the appropriately sized soldering iron tip you can do you know basically factory soldering on a board you know with 402 size components and larger um so practice that's the whole key i didn't have any you know hands-on or you know i wasn't taught how to do it i just learned myself taught myself um it's not hard but it comes down to practice especially if you're the person that did you know boggle this radio then once you destroyed it, you've got a perfect test bed here. Look at all those parts. You know, you could practice on, you know, safely removing these transistors, reinstalling it, and how to do it. So, you know, find something old and electronic that's got surface mount parts in it and practice. But, uh, you know, like I say, this is this just uncalled for the destruction of radios like I'm seeing nowadays. I've got, like I say, dozens of radios like this. They're just, they're not worth fixing. It's going to take a day, at least an entire day, to get in there and try and properly replace those little tiny circuit traces in there and it gets to the point where and then once i get that done once i get all the traces fixed all of the components and reinstalled properly that somebody had messed with in there then i've got to go through and find out what's actually wrong with the radio not knowing what's actually wrong with it do all the troubleshooting and repairs and then an alignment well hell by then guy could have bought a brand new a, a brand new radio and had a <clears throat> and then had it tuned up so you know, like I said, that's what I should should have titled the this video, because that's what I, I feel every time I look at stuff like this. So, you know, there's my uh, bitch for 2016.